Fáilte Rov Galair Ga Cashlan and Gaur, Idella Guinness. Hello and welcome to the Dawkey Castle Heritage Centre DVD. Dawkey has a rich and varied history that stretches back over 6,000 years. Come join us on a historic journey into the past through this ancient and venerable part of Ireland. Our story begins with Dawkey Island. Its old Irish name was Jella Guinness, meaning Thorn Island. This was later changed to Dawk E by the Vikings and later still anglicised to today's Dawkey. It's from the island that mainline Dawkey got its name. As far back as six and a half thousand years ago, Stone Age man chose Dawkey Island as a dwelling place. Archaeologists have found evidence of hunting, food gathering and early farming that dates back to this time. Midden pits containing shells, pottery shards and cattle bones have been discovered. There's also evidence that a Stone Age axe factory once existed on the island due to the many pieces of highly worked and polished flint found on the site. Several skeletons were also discovered in the midden pits, including one whose head was deliberately filled with periwinkle shells. We can only guess as to the reason for this. Is it evidence perhaps of some ancient burial ritual? As time wore on, settlement developed on the island and man's building and seafaring abilities grew more sophisticated. In the 5th and 6th centuries, a promontory fort was erected on the north end of the island. Archaeologists found further treasures on this site, including remains of wine containers, glassware and bronze pins and clasps. Some of these items can be traced to locations as far flung as Greece, North Africa and the Dalmatian coast off Croatia. In 700 AD, an early Christian church was founded on the island. It was named after Begnet, daughter of Colman, son of A. Begnet's churches on the island, and later on the mainland, are believed to have been subject to the famous monastery in Glendalough. This was a time of great upheaval in Ireland. In the 800s, the Vikings invaded and set up a fortified camp in Dublin. In the early 900s, however, they suffered a defeat and fled to Dawkey Island to regroup. Still trading in slaves, they used this site as a holding place for their unfortunate prisoners. Indeed, the Annals of the Four Masters, a historical record of the time, tells how in the year 938, Cuiv Deinach, the abbot of Kil Achi, drowned in an ill-fated bid to escape his foreign captors. This profitable slave trade might also be linked to a hoard of Viking coins that were found in Castle Street in Victorian times. They displayed the head of King Edgar, who ruled from 959 to 975. These are now in the British Museum in London. By this time, settlement had begun in the mainland, in the area we now call Dawkey Town. One of the oldest structures visible today is the 10th century stone church. Like its counterpart on the island, this church was also dedicated to St. Begnet. Let's take a closer look. The oldest part of the church is the nave where people worshipped. Inside the door is a holy water stoop. Then, as now, it was customary to make the sign of the cross with holy water on entering the church. A window in the north-facing wall also dates from the 10th century. In the 13th century, the chancel, chancel arch and twin belfry were added. Unusually, the bells were struck by hand, requiring parishioners or clergymen to climb onto the roof to call people to prayer. In the top corner of the chancel is the ambry, where the sacred vessels were kept. The chancel window was added later in the 16th century. Another unique feature dating from earliest times is the Ratdan slab. The Ratdan slabs are pre-Christian burial markers, as their cup marks and concentric circles testify. The slabs were later adapted as Christian burial markers 
by the insertion of a Latin wheeled cross in the middle. This one was discovered in St. Begnet's graveyard in 1855 and is one of 28 found in the local area. As life continued in Dalkey, significant events were taking place around the country. In 1169, the Anglo-Normans arrived in Ireland. In 1348, the Black Death struck, decimating the local population. In the mid-1300s, Dalkey rose to prominence to solve a very medieval problem. For years, Dublin merchants had been importing goods and supplies to Ireland. However, as ships got larger and heavier, they found that they were unable to navigate the shallow and treacherous River Liffey. They could, however, anchor safely in the deep waters of Dalkey Sound. So a group of merchants applied to the Crown to use deep waters of Dalkey to offload goods bound for Dublin. They were successful and soon the heaviest cargo from overseas was being removed at Dalkey for transport overland to the city. Dalkey owes much of its layout and development to the merchants who carted these valuable cargoes up from the seashore. Over time, seven fortified townhouses, locally referred to as castles, were built to store these goods. Word must have spread quickly that valuable supplies were being stored in the seaside town and it became vulnerable to attack. In response, the town became a fortified settlement and the residents of the seven town houses took extra measures to protect themselves. Of the seven houses, Dalkey Castle is the best preserved and today houses the Heritage Centre. Let's take a look at its original layout. Directly over the castle entrance is the machiculation. This is a special opening that enables archers to fire arrows and drop stones down on the heads of unwelcome guests. If the invaders make their way past this, they found themselves underneath the murder hole. Like the machiculation, it allowed residents to drop firewood, stones and boiling liquids down on their attackers. But what might these attackers have been looking for? The ground floor was a main storeroom of the castle. Heavy goods that couldn't be damaged by flood water were kept here such as wine, iron and coal. Above this was a mezzanine, resting on stone corbels, two of which survive today. Clothes, wool, animal hides and more perishable goods were stored here. The first floor would originally have been divided up by timber partitions. Here people ate, entertained and warmed themselves by the fireplaces. Also at this level was the garderobe, a small room that served both as a dressing room and a medieval toilet. The ammonia in the urine killed the fleas in the garments. From the first floor, a spiral staircase led to the sleeping quarters. It was deliberately spiraled to the right to give right-handed defenders an advantage when wielding their swords. On the roof of the castle, battlements and turrets were used as a lookout. This is called the Warder's Walk. And it's here that we find, fluttering in the breeze, a unique clue to the ownership of the castle. Dorky Castle was once known as Goat Castle, a name given to it by a family called the Cheevers. The name Cheevers comes from the French word chèvre, meaning goat. Look closely and you'll see the banner flying atop of the castle has three goats taken directly from the Cheevers family coat of arms. Outside the building lay the stocks, an instrument of medieval punishment. Today, a reconstruction of the medieval stocks exists. Life wasn't all attacks and punishments, though. In medieval times, some of the best sources of fun, gossip and social activity were markets and fairs. In 1482, Dorky was granted a license to hold its own weekly market every Tuesday. Around the same time, an annual fair was held each 12th of November on the feast day of St. Begnet. Shopkeepers would set up stalls outside the town and great merriment was made. In the late 1500s and throughout the 1600s, the ports around Dublin were developed to accommodate deep, heavy ships. As a result, Dorky's importance began to fade. 
The town slipped into decline and by 1630, St. Begnet's church was reported to be abandoned and roofless. Dawkey became a sleeping fishing village. In 1789, chains swept through Europe as the French Revolution brought new ideas to the world. By 1793, England found itself at war with the revolution's successor, Napoleon Bonaparte. Fearing an invasion of Ireland, a string of 26 fortified towers were built from Balbriggan to Bray. Named the Martello Towers after Cape Martella in Corsica, several of these beautiful structures still stand today. In Dawkey, a prominent signal tower was constructed on Dawkey Hill to communicate between the towers. Several years later, as the Napoleonic Wars still raged, tragedy struck. On November the 18th, 1807, a number of ships left Dublin carrying troops bound for war. But that night, the fleet was caught in gale force winds and heavy snow, and two were lost. For weeks afterwards, bodies washed up along the shore. A number were buried locally in St. Begnet's graveyard. This loss of almost 400 lives was the catalyst for the building of Dunleary Harbour, construction of which began in 1817. In contrast to the tragic events that inspired it, this was a busy and exciting time in Dawkey's history. Stone for the harbour was taken from Dawkey Quarry, drawing many new people to live and work in the area. The project was aided by an ingenious self-powering funicular railway built to transport the stone to the sea. The population received a further boost soon afterwards when a railway connection to Dunleary was opened in 1834. Ten years later, the opening of the atmospheric railway to Dawkey sparked an influx of grand new Victorian residences. People could now live in the suburbs and take the sea air and work in the city. Today, people still live, work and commute from Dawkey, a town rich in ancestral heritage, archaeological significance and social history. Thank you for taking the time to travel with us on our brief historic journey. Now, if you haven't already done so, why not explore the Heritage Centre and its surroundings? Discover how life was lived in a medieval fortified townhouse. Climb to the battlements, enjoy the peace and tranquility of the church and graveyard, or learn more about Victorian Dawkey from our beautiful scaled models. Whatever your choice, we hope that you enjoy all that Dawkey Castle and Heritage Centre has to offer. Slán live.